If your names are different on either one of the things, they're going to ask for all proofs of identification and proof who you are. Okay. We're dealing with the government. So, moderate take uh, that sentence down at the bottom, does that say in case of major disasters? No, it says if you're if you're an evacuated, displaced by Hurricane Katrina, or Rita, or Rita. <coughs> so if you're someone that lived in one, um, and you were affected by one of these. Well, what I'm thinking is that may change with time. And it's going to change, it's gonna change but as of right now, th this was uh, just taken off their site. Now, what I was thinking is if somebody was in Florida displaced, but they could buy here, they'd still have priority. Um, they're not going to really have programs, but there are programs. It's not a priority. They just have programs for those people. They get, a, they're gonna, they maybe going to get a little bit more. That that was just put on the HUD website maybe like a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. That's new. Because yeah, HUD's always constantly updating if, 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 if websites and stuff. But the main thing is 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 to, in order to participate in the HUD, the bottom line is, you guys got to get involved with the brokerage that is a HUD approved brokerage. HUD is ever changing. There's always going to be a new world. Yeah, and, and something else happened. God forbid, another Katrina or something, Sandy, then it'll be something different. Anything else to go back? Hey guys, we have no problem with questions today, but to keep, so, so Sid can stay on track with the schedule, raise your hand and wait for Sid to call on you before you ask your question or comment. That way, if he wants to wait until the next break in his thought or slides, he can call on you and come back to you to keep the pace of the day. But uh, 1 o'clock will be here before we know it. Oh, yeah. And if you don't raise your hand and allow Sid to pace the question, the Q&A, we're going to fall way behind. You're not going to get the information you came for today. So with all due respect, is we want the questions. Just raise your hand and wait to be called on just like we did back in school. Uh, I'm still in school. All right, so with HUD, we're going to move on to foreclosures now. So with HUD, we okay? You guys have an understanding, a better understanding of HUD? All right, so we're going to move on to, to, to foreclosure. I mean, what is a foreclosure? So um, a for, a basically a foreclosure is a bank-owned property. So at the end of the day, uh, you haven't paid your mortgage. That particular um, entity will go in and go through a certain, a certain set of stages and pretty much seize the property and sell the property. And so it becomes a real estate owned, bank owned. The bank owns it. It's almost, it's, HUD, HUD and foreclosures are pretty much similar. Mm -hmm. They're a similar entity. The, only, the difference with the, with the foreclosures You're writing a regular contract on a foreclosure. Yeah, you're writing a regular contract and there's, the government's not as involved with, with these properties. And plus you're dealing with the, an asset management. Type of and they actually, they actually yes. can be worse. This is actually a great question. I don't know the answer to it. I hope you do. Mm -hmm. You have a HUD home, mm -hmm. and it's on, owned by the government. You have a foreclosure, primary residence. Where do the HUD home pool come? Where do the HUD homes, that pool of homes, where do they come from? Are they, they FHA, VA? They, they, they buy. The government? They actually buy. They buy them. They buy them. Okay. Okay. They buy them. Government they snatch them up. Yeah. So if you look at, there's an article that just came out yesterday, FHA is about to go broke. $13.5 billion worth of negative money right now in FHA. Mm -hmm. Just came out yesterday. Okay, so a lot of this stuff is government-backed security. So when you get the HUD properties, the government somehow, through treasury bonds and T-bonds, whatever, has funded the deal. So that's how they become HUD properties. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening with FHA, with VA right now. So there's a lot of new regulations that are going to hit the first quarter of 2013. So um, pay attention to, to, to the market. Uh, buying a foreclosure uh, home. A lot of foreclosure homes, uh, you know, like Tammy said earlier, you have to have relationships with agents to be able to bid on homes, or you yourself got to be an agent yourself, right? So a lot of foreclosure properties, you can look through the MRIS system. They also have mm -hmm. some guidelines where they won't allow you to bid within the first five to 10 days, mm -hmm. 15 days, then after that, they'll allow you to bid. But again, a lot of people are, are, are going after foreclosure properties right now, and the pipeline is drying up because of the fact that sold, the government has sold so much trillions of dollars of bad assets already to larger uh, firms. So um, if you guys want a realtor track, that's a real good tool to utilize. You've got the pre-foreclosures. So if you guys haven't looked into that, that's something 
that the district media offers as, as part of their uh, membership. So um, it's a real good tool to stay on top of pre foreclosure properties and try to get in front of the curve and get to the homeowners to be able to market to them and again provide a solution to, to their problem. How to find a foreclosure home and to buy it. Well, um, there's a couple of free. Uh, it's, mostly, it's mostly a bunch of couple. Of, it's, you're going to have some free websites below. Yeah. Also, another good thing to do, and actually from working with him, I kind of picked it up. If you kind of, if sometimes when you drive around a neighborhood, you'll see a house that looks like it's a little unkept. If you actually, um, and it's, it's a free, this is another free website, it's called www.MarylandLandRack.com. You can actually come. Landrec. Dot net. Dot net, sorry, you're right. Sorry, dot net. You can actually kind of track to see what a house is doing. You can see if the bank has already assigned it over to a bank, um, where it's at in the process. So you can kind of look out for it to come on the market. How do you spell it? Land. Land, L-A-N-D. www.md. <laughs> Land. I just lost it. Land. MD Land Rec. Land Rec. R E C. Dot net. And you just you'll get a free you'll get a it's free. Um, they'll give you a password and a and a you you know a password and a username and you can kind of check. I just checked one in my neighborhood recently. I I I know exactly where it's at. It's been that way for almost four years now. But you can kind of see where this property may come on the market sometime soon. So you can kind of look out for it. They have something similar like that in DC. DC, yeah, I've not found one in DC. No, yeah. and I used to work in DC. Um, Virginia, you would have to go on the Virginia um, Land Records website, and you can check on VA Land Records. But they don't got one either, either now. That's been a mess I've done VA. Maryland's the only one I think that's as intensive as it is, and they're still like six months behind on, on their recordation. Right, plus, just to touch on this, I mean, if this goes back to the investor agent program, okay, so think about yourself as an investor agent. Program. So when you become an agent, okay, um, you get a lot of this information through the National Association of Realtors, through the local board, either G card or your PG card, uh, through MRIS, okay, and the fact that you're an agent, you're able to get in with the asset managers and work your building relationship with the banks directly. If you're not an agent and you call up an asset manager, Bank of uh, uh, America, you think they want to talk to you? Mm -hmm. But if you say I'm an agent and here's what I, I can offer you, here's what I'd like to do for you, you can start to build a relationship with some of these asset managers. Right? So the, the, the key here is knowledge. Get as much <coughs> understanding of the process as possible in terms of how they think, the asset managers think, how the bidding process is, the time on the on, on, on the on the internet before it goes live to investors, all this stuff get understanding so you can uh, bid on more deals and win. All right, so being an agent has a lot of value. Oh, there it is. So now we can take your Q and A. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, Questions. These asset managers, we're talking HUD asset managers or any bank asset manager? It depends right. on which one you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Different banks have different asset managers. Um, uh, bank of America has their own website where you can actually go on and register as an agent. Ch uh, Chase has a website where you can log in as an in and create a profile as an agent. And you can become an agent for Bowie, for DC, for you know whatever territory. And they'll send you listings. They make you go through an intensive. Pro you have to go through an intensive process to become an actual, um, to actual lock in with an asset manager, and that means that you're going to have to. One second. If you actually, you, to um, actually become an agent, you're going. They're going to look for years of experience. So you're going to look. You, they're going to actually for your resume. If you have a small um, group, they're going to ask for resumes of everybody in your staff. They're going to want to know your your profit and sales. You know, it, it's going to be a, it's, it's pretty much a nice little thick REO packet that you're going to have to put together, and you're actually going to have to send it to that bank. 
Would it be possible to log into the HUD home store and go into it to show everybody what it looks like mm -hmm. so that they could see that? Yeah. Well, here, uh, while she's doing that, I'm just going to send you like, here's a, here's a deal that we just responded to this week. Okay, it's, it's, it's a regular listing. It's, it's in the MRIS system. And um, we read through it. We read the remarks and the fine print. And then, you know, we decided to, to bid on this thing. Can you tell us about the details on that? Yeah, so this particular property is uh, in uh, Capitol Heights, Maryland. It's listed on here for uh, 50000 It's a 3-1. And um, built in 1940. The tax assessment for 2012 is $115,800. Uh, this has central air conditioning already. It's got a driveway. And it needs probably about fifteen thousand dollars of repairs. Could we start over again? I'm going to write it up on the board. It's in Capitol Heights. It's in uh, Capitol Heights, Maryland. It's listed for fifty. And this is a single family. It's a single family. It's a three-one. It's a two-level. What does it say in the remarks? Come get me. <laughs> <laughs> so is it, open, is it an open investor bid yeah, right it's now? A, it's a, it says great investments. It said this home could be nice with some uh, carpet and paint and, and little TLC. A true, di uh, true diamond in the rough. A mechanic special, basically. Right. Bring your, bring your best. <clears throat> Anyone that deals with cars, a mechanic special. Right. So what is the total days on market at this point? Uh, this one was, uh, well, when we got it, when we looked at this thing, it was brand new. One. When we looked at it 10 days ago, so it was brand new at that time. But it so, had already been on the market mm, yeah. for, for others. So you guys saw it day one. Day one. Anybody understand? Day one. Yeah. Day one. Day one and a half, what could happen? Gone. Be gone. Day two, it's probably gone. Right. So this is why being an investor agent, you have access to the MLS, you set your data searches for this specific criteria, you're able to get instant alerts to when these properties come up, correct? Right. Right. So the minute you see them, do you think you wait until tomorrow morning to go see it? No. Nope. You stop everything you're doing, you get in your vehicle, and you go look at the asset. Got that? Lacey has a question. Yeah, no, not a question to that end. A property listing came out one morning. I couldn't get to it. I didn't get to it till that afternoon. When I got there, there was another agent there, or there was an agent there rather, <laughs> and we went through the property and I wanted to put a bid in. Um, while I was there, the agent was calling into his office. He said, never mind, this is gone. Right. Liter I mean, literally, it was six hours. <laughs> six hours. So you gotta be on your P's and Q's and, and be able to get out the property. The systems update every midnight. Every midnight, the systems update. Uh, so one of the things that we've done over time is we've created systems where as soon as it updates and there's new product that hits the market, we run through an analyzer and we determine, okay, these are the five we want to go after. So when that happens, then the system creates like a CMA for us. So we're going to look at what is going on in the neighborhood. What are our comps? What are our subject properties? What's selling? What's not? How long is it taking? Once we look at all this data, then we're like, okay, these are the five we want to bid on, right? So again, it goes back to having systems, having processes, having the right people, having a team. You can't do this by yourself. Question. What was it about that property that you decided to put a bid on it? I can make money from it. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> well, what? Well, what I like about this is we looked at the, um, the supply and demand over the last 12 months in this neighborhood. And we looked at to see how many investors went into it and turned around the neighborhood. So in this particular zip code, 20743, there's been a lot of activity for investors in there. And the comps are starting to go up to 180, 185. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're, it's a transitional area. So this is a hot area right now. But Sid, you know how to do that. I, I know how to do that. But a lot of people don't know how to do that. That's education that we provide to them, correct? Yeah. How to know how to look for this demographic, investor, age, I'm not a, the 
you know, where the investors are going in and looking at the demographics. We do go over all of that in, in our program, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah. So when, once you look at the CMA, once you look at the, the comparative market analysis of the property behavior, yeah, it'll tell you all this information. It'll tell you, and, and I mean, it, it'll literally, you'll get so used to reading this data, it'll take you 10 minutes. It's the same. It's just a matter to know which fields to look at, which categories to look at. Numbers don't lie. You guys know that before. Right. So, Sid, you went to see the home? Yeah, we went to look at it. And when you went to go see it as, as an agent and as a general contractor, were you looking at it to rehab it all the way, keep it as, what was your exit strategy? We're going to rehab it and flip it. You're going to rehab it and flip. Right. All right. So, you, this is important, everybody. He ha hasn't even put an offer in on the property yet, but he already knows like that what his exit strategy is, right? So you must learn as an investor and as an agent working with investors that they're going to have or you need to have an exit strategy. You need to know what you're going to be doing before you even enter into it, correct? Absolutely. So your exit strategy is to rehab and flip. You know that going in. You also know, according to the market, what your budget should be on that rehab, right? Right. So what is, when you went into that home, mm -hmm. did you spend an entire day there putting a budget together, or were you there for 15 minutes? About 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. About 15, 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. What is the budget that you came up with? 32 that. How in the world would anybody know who doesn't have construction eyes, how to put a budget together. We have the systems, we've created the systems to take the 15 years off of your learning curve through the investor agent program. We have residential, we have multi-unit, we have commercial budget spreadsheets, we have all of that for you. You don't need to work. And it's okay if you don't know how to budget. We're gonna go into homes and walk through and teach you how to train your eye. A lot of this is trained, correct? Yes. Okay. So 32,000. 50,000 is your offer? Right. Or it's listed? Yeah, but we want this, so we're going to go at 50,000. You want it that bad? Right. So is he motivated? Yes. Yes. So 50,000 cash, 50,000 contingent on financing. Cash. 50,000 cash. Right. 32 rehab. Right. Is 82. Does that 32 include your whole costs? Yes. Okay, so that includes everything. Everything. Does that include your 10% oops money? <coughs> well, well, in my case, no. I mean, because I, 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 I don't make mistakes. I'm very thorough. I, I mean, I'm going to take a Oops, time. you're going to add 10% <laughs> oops money. <laughs> Because <laughs> you will make mistakes. Because yeah. you will, you will you not. make mistakes. <laughs> but yeah, you want to add 10, 15%. And then there's been cases where when you take down the walls, and there's termite. Mm -hmm. And the, those, the eyes can't see those things. Okay, so 50 and 32 is 82 um, plus another 5, um, what is that, 88? Right. 87, 87,000, right? What is the ARV on this neighborhood? On this, the, the neighborhood, we're going to turn this into a three, it's only a three bedroom. It's a one bath right now. So we're going to turn it into a 2.5 bathroom. So we're going to add a 1.5 bathroom to it. So we're just going to allow the ARV to go up. And right now, at our ARV is like 175 to 185. But our, we're doing our numbers at 165. If we can make money at 165, we know that the, the exit is 185, 175. But we know we can make money at once. The goal is to list it low and to get a whole pe bunch of people to come to it and get the bid to go up to 185. When will you know if you've got this property? Um, How long is it going to take? It's going to take another about four or five days. Yeah. Another four to five days? And you have, you're ready to close on it right now? Yeah. And will you start the reason? I got my overalls on under this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. 
I'm sure some of you are probably feeling pretty overwhelmed about how do you even know how to even do this before you put in the offer. Will you please be honest? Anybody in the room feeling pretty overwhelmed about how do you even get to this point to feel safe to put an offer in? Everybody's really comfortable with it? Yeah. Okay. Like, <laughs> okay. Guys, this is what District Rhea, Brickfront Properties, and Next Stage are here for. Okay? We really pride ourselves on differentiating ourselves from other organizations, other uh, brokerages, other real estate investment associations in the area. Education is the key to your growth. It takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. It's okay to be overwhelmed. That's what we're here for. He's got how many years? 15, 20 years. I've got 16 years in. Guys, it just takes time. But that's why we are here providing this education for you. All right. I want to get into this website. Sure. Unlock the keys, please. Okay. I have a question. Yes. I'm <coughs> just a real quick question. Um, when you go to HUD properties, isn't there a report in there that shows you that an inspector's come through and he an inspector lists out the issues with the property? Yeah. Yeah. There's a... Um, there's a uh, attachment, and if that has been done and it's been uploaded properly, you'll see it right there. You better see it. Right? And then you can read through it, and it'll tell you what they found. So HUD will send out their inspectors to the properties to kind of like do a BPO for a short sale. HUD will do the same thing for HUD properties to set a price. Remember, we're talking about setting a price, and then they'll put down like, okay, there's a missing roof, or the windows are missing, or the kitchen appliances are gone or if there's water in the basement, or if there's mold, they'll list those things. And if it's uploaded properly, if it's done properly, yeah, you should be able to see so that. Was it, did you have a report with that one? This one did not happen. Did not happen, okay. Yeah. So you just... And sometimes when they're brand new, mm -hmm. once the, the listing is brand new, they haven't had a chance to send somebody out there to do those things, so they, they, may, they may not be uploaded. Uh, but if the listing is maybe 20, 30 days old, um, then that information should be there if it's done right. Okay, thank you. So Sid, if I am an investor agent with Next Stage, am I allowed as the investor agent to go into the site or are you only No no you to go as to the agent long as your license is hanging on the wall in our office, you can get in. You can oh, wow. well, technically anyone can get into the site, but it's to get through the back door and put in a bid that you actually need your MAD number. Right. And not number. all brokerages, I know this for a fact, yeah, are, are right. HUD approved. Or so, it's only a small handful. But, and the mistake a lot of people make is that they think that once they get it once, that they just, it's forever. Actually, your NAID number has to be renewed every year. Mm -hmm. and, and HUD is very, very on point. That they let you know when, you're, when your thing is up maybe like about three or four months beforehand. Mm -hmm. And they only give you one warning after that, they just, shut, they just take your properties away from you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Very serious. Okay, take okay. us through the mission. Okay, this is the this is the HUD Home Store website. So let's say um, you want to get a home, and you you're not sure exactly where out in the county, but you know that you that you're partial to maybe the Fort Washington area, which is where I'm from. So you can just put in that. If you know the street, a street name, you put in the street name. If you know the exact house that you want, and then you just actually just hit search. And you're doing open-ended for bedrooms and bathrooms? Yep, so you can put in as much criteria Yeah, the more the more rigorous you make it, it doesn't let you do bedrooms and bathrooms. It'll let you do the um, county. It'll let you do a price. For, yeah, you can do it right there. It's right there. It wasn't there before. But you just do that right there, and you hit the search. I left it open-ended because sometimes um, people label things wrong. Correct. Because actually, <coughs> um, the criteria for a bedroom is that it has to have a, be it has to have a window into it. So that was my next question. We're in Maryland, but let's say that I wanted to own property in Texas. You can put Texas in here. Are you, as a HUD broker, allowed to also see all the other HUD homes in all the other states? Yes. You can see the homes, but you got to make sure you affiliate yourself with the Another broker. Texas okay. broker so that's HUD approved. There's none. They, they have none from Washington area. Somebody pick a zip code. 21229. 21229. Baltimore. <coughs> Excuse me. Just, just one question. Mm -hmm. uh, it, how is it that, it, it, this looks like a great, great deal. How is it that you weren't somebody, you know, 10 people didn't come in and get it? 
Yeah. Uh, you want to know um, if how how is it that you got such margins? And there's, it's, it seems like there's so many people out, investors out there. How did you get such a great deal? On this last property? Yeah. 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 On this one you're yeah. talking about. Oh, this one. Well, we haven't gotten it yet. We, we're putting our package yeah. in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But we know what our margin is, so let's just say we go in at 50, and because of bidding war, mm -hmm. and it goes to 60, 65, 70, mm -hmm. we're still looking at a back end. If our back end still makes sense, then we'll keep bidding. Okay. But if it gets to the point where it's 100,000 and there's no margin on the back end, we're going to leave it alone. There, so there's there's a button. Keep, there's they're a button. Keep coming back and telling um, you somebody uh, out, out bid you. There's a button on the HUD thing that says, do you want to um, have a, keep having it escalate? Mm -hmm. But HUD won't physically keep coming back. They'll just say, you'll put where you're willing to stop it, and HUD will take it to that point if it has to. Okay. So they'll know within four days whether or not they've won this, okay. this bid. <laughs> if they've won this bid, they must then act within 48 hours with their EMD, their earnest money deposit, and be ready to go to closing. But you're not going to know you won until you get the email back from HUD. Yes, yes, Dom. With this particular property, you're, you're, is this for investors or for the first um, dibs? Is, if, if right now it's for right now it's primary, and then it'll go into investor. Most most primary people don't want to fix their upper. Okay. How much is the earnest money? It's deposit? always a thousand. I'm sorry. It's, uh, HUD is always a thousand, a maximum of two of two thousand. And how soon do you go to closing? It's normally within thirty days. Yes. Wait a minute. He's an investor. How did he bid before the primary? He got said done? he has he, he said he hasn't bid it yet. What he's done is he has this stuff ready to go to get to to get that thing set up. You can pre-do something in the once you log in, but you can't. They won't take it. They won't take it right now. Okay, so he has to wait for. He has the to wait. Days. Yes, he has to wait. Okay. Mm -hmm. So why don't you have a list of buyers that would buy a HUD home? that would allow you to jump in when you saw this, have them buy it. You need, need to live there a year, right? You're supposed to, yes. All right, but you can fix it up before that, Yes. before you move in. Yes. So you could have somebody who buys it and quote. That, that, that's, once again, that's another liability that some people don't want to deal with. And he doesn't want to deal with that, so he doesn't do that. Okay. Well, so, okay. No, I'm just thinking because that allows you to get in early, yeah, but it's sort of like people who have the multi-million dollar homes that they that are vacant and they have house sitters. Have you dealt a lot with the HUD properties? I almost got one. Okay. I'm a, um, HUD, and I've dealt with a lot of them, HUD is very strenuous. They are the government. They know your social security number. They know your name. They will find you. They, they know where you live. They, right. <laughs> they think that you're doing something shady with the property, that you, yeah. that you got someone living in it, and that you go and you're going to do something to it later. They will come after you. We've seen it happen before. You'll be in an orange jumpsuit next to <laughs> Well, what I was referring to in my case, I was looking for a place to live and also an investment. So for me, it made sense to buy it, remodel it, live in oh, it yeah. a year. Yeah, because you're primary, then you can, you're, yeah. that's different than trying to get someone in it. But, but, well, but what I'm saying is, if you had a list of primaries, yeah, and you know there's a back end on this, you, you're almost yeah, taking them in as kind of a partner where they're... You, that, that's, that, that's a liability. Yeah. That's, that, that's right. that, that, those yeah. are exit strategies and personal choices yeah. as, as a, an yes. investor that you have to take. We need to keep moving on. There's a question in the back. Yes, yeah, I would, it's something similar to that. As an agent, someone comes to Hamid and say, I want to buy that three bedroom mm -hmm. as my primary. Can he go ahead and submit that bid yeah, for this individual? Yes, yes, for that yeah, person, yes. yes. Okay. As the agent As an for agent. that home buyer. Yes. 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 Okay. Now, if that individual uh, finances fell through and what have you, okay, can he then take over? He can't take no. over. Okay. It's, not HUD, 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 mm -mm. Hi, it's on the website. HUD controls everything. If If just because he submitted it, it has to be released in the system as an investor open bid before anyone can bid on it. What he has done is he's prepared himself for the moment it goes live, bam, he's there. He's ready. He's already done his homework. Why? He wants it. So he's ready. And I guarantee you he will know within seconds that it goes live. Okay. 
and he'll probably call Anisha, Anisha, or Anisha, Anisha, Anisha. I mean, he. I guarantee you, he's got someone on it, and it it will go in immediately. Okay. All right. So this is the HUD. So we put in that zip code, and only two properties in that zip code came up. Okay. So let's open one up. We have a three bedroom, two bath, three bedroom, one bath. We'll take the little. All right, so what is that case number? What is that? That's that's the actual bid number. So when you get ready to actually bid, it's going to ask you for that case number. And when you go to